Welcome into Candlestick Chronicles, a 49ers podcast on the Blue Wire Podcast Network. I'm Kyle Madsen. I write about the 49ers over at NinersWire.com, part of the USA Today Sports Media Group. Uh, joining me, as always, Chris Biederman. And before we dive into 49ers free agency stuff, let's chat about Lamb Chops. SGLambchops.com is the website. Promo code Candlestick20 is the promo code. You get 20% off your order. If you're watching on YouTube, you see the Lamb Chops shirt Chris is wearing. And Chris... That shirt not only looks dope, which is the most important thing, of course. Uh, I'm sure it's high quality and comfortable. High quality, a little bit thicker for this cool early spring climate we kind of got going on in, in the Sacramento yeah. region right now. I actually mm-hmm. have a full lamb chops fit. Uh, I'm wearing the sweat shorts in wow. addition to the uh, in addition to the heavy graphic tee here. Feeling super comfortable. Feeling plenty warm in the house. Turn the uh, turn the heat down so we're operating a little cooler than usual uh, inside inside the domain. But um, I'm nice and toasty because I got my I got my sweat shorts and my little thick thick tee going on here. It's it's great times. Really, just in, really enjoy wearing my lamb chop stuff, whether it's out in the world or home podcasting in the studio. Chris enjoys his lamb chops. We know you will too. So hit sglambchops.com right now. Get yourself a hoodie, some shorts, sweatpants. My dad, a lamb chops convert, calls them the best sweatpants he's ever owned. Uh, they're the best. And I know you'll like them. So head to sglambchops.com. Use promo code candlestick20 and get 20% off your order today. We're also sponsored by Prize Picks. We love Prize Picks. It is daily fantasy sports. It is the best way, especially during basketball season. You got college basketball going on, men's college basketball, women's college basketball. You got NBA stuff going on. Um, and all the games are starting to matter this time of year. And you can enhance your viewing experience with prize picks, man. Fire up an entry. It's daily fantasy, but you're not playing against thousands of other people. You're not playing against sharp guys. You're not n- nothing. You pick two to six players. You pick more or less on their stat projections, and then uh, you watch the winnings pile up. Or in in the case of Chris and myself, you watch the L's pile up, and that's fine too, because we're ready to bounce back. It's going to be a big year for us. I think the one of the most important things about Prize Picks is just listen. You don't have to deal with injuries. You don't have to deal with the waiver wire. You don't have to deal with nope. arguing with your friends if you're doing a snake draft or an auction draft. Nope. Um, you could really play, you know, seven days a week and somebody gets hurt it's not the end of the world it's not the end of your season um it's it's far less fluky than the traditional fantasy format we're all very familiar with so it's just a refreshing look on on daily fantasy sports and it's a lot of fun and uh who doesn't like to win a little a little extra cash here and there it's one of my favorite things to do and uh, i especially love doing it with prize picks so join us there prizepicks.com slash candlestick promo code candlestick for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars head to prizepicks.com slash candlestick promo code candlestick for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars all right let's talk 49ers free agency <clears throat> this might be a hot take but i think the niners free agency has been good like they haven't made a big you- splash they haven't signed a big, you know, a major name or a multiple multiple time All Pro or anything like that. They've just had a really, really solid free agency to me. You ready for a scorching hot take? Oh boy, am I! It's been fine. <laughs> it's it's not like it's they they haven't knocked it out of the park. I don't know what opportunities they would have had to yeah. like really knock it out of the park in a way that makes sense for them. Given, you know, they are under a little bit different financial constraints to where, you know, if they were to go get Daniil Hunter um, at the price that he costs, it's it is more difficult to retain the rest of your core players going forward. And I'm sure there are different machinations to to have made that work. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like the Niners are at a point where a lot of their core guys and like Eric Armstead as as sort of an avatar for this, like a lot of those guys are going to be aging off the roster and you know, there's there, there are going to be decisions made that you're not going to be able to keep all of these guys. And you know, when you spend in free agency, it's kind of like car shopping in the sense that like the sticker price is the sticker price. And then once you drive something off the lot, it uh, dr- drops in value like by a ton, right? Like that's, yeah. that's what free agent spending is. So when you can get mm-hmm. players, 
who are not at the top of the market. Like if you can get a star player in the prime of his career at the top of the market, then that's fine. But you know, even Daniil Hunter has been around for a while and is not, you know, the chances are he's he's on the back nine of his of his career, you know, and, and definitely not the front nine. So are you gonna get right. an ascending player who's gonna be cost prohibitive while you deal with, you know, trying to sign Brandon Ayuk? adjusting to life with Nick Bosa on a contract that makes him the most expensive defender in the NFL, right? Like you're going to have to pay Brock Purdy at some point. So with, with the cap, the cap rules the way they are. And given that the, the room you create year after year rolls into the next season, every Mm -hmm. move you make matters in the long run. Like you, you pay for a bunch of guys. Now you have less space than, than you would had you not signed them, obviously. And then spinning that forward a couple of years when you're looking at potentially paying Brock Purdy $50 million a year or whatever his market rate's going to be, um, mm-hmm. it gets it gets extremely difficult. So I, I understand fans who want the instant gratification of like, man, they haven't signed any super splashy guys. It's like, you know what? They're still, they're still probably the favorites in the NFC as of this moment, right? Mm-hmm. And the bigger thing for the 49ers at this point is nailing the draft. It's just being I, able to yes. get is being able to get core players who, you know, that why why are the 49ers where they're at right now? It's because they've drafted George Kittle in exactly. the fifth round. They've drafted Fred Warner in the third round. Mm-hmm. And yeah, they've been able to fill, you know, fill out the roster with ancillary pieces like trading for Trent Williams on a really good Good trade for them, obviously. Um, you know, drafting Debo Samuel, drafting Brandon Ayuk, and you know, kind of going against the grain, and giving up a ton of picks for Christian McCaffrey at a time where just about everybody in the league would be skeptical of the idea of paying significant resources for a running back. And it turned out CMC really just changed everything for for the 49ers. Mm-hmm. But that's that's like that's rare, right? Like mm-hmm. that's not that's the exception, not the rule. Um, so for the 49ers, just given the, how many high, highly paid players they already have on their roster, as much as we would love, you know, fans would love for them to just break the bank on everybody. Adding Leonard Floyd to a reasonable contract is fine. Trading a seven for Melia Collins is fine. Right. So that, that's, that's sort of how I, that's sort of how I look at it. Like they don't they don't need to make tons of splashy moves in for agency. The more important thing for them is nailing the draft and being able to field a team around Brock Purdy. That's affordable because when he does end up getting paid in a couple of years, it's going to completely change your financial picture. Yeah, man, the, they're not paying a star player a, because it would be financially a little more difficult and B they don't need more star players. It could be nice. And you want to get as many good players as you can. But you mentioned like Leonard Floyd and Yuder Gross Matos. Like good, solid additions. They're not going to be pro bowlers, but they should be good and give you depth at a spot that you badly needed depth. And that's at, at defensive end. Uh, Malik Collins and Jordan Elliott. And you trade for Malik Collins, you sign Jordan Elliott to a cheap deal. That's your a starting defensive tackle, a rotational defensive tackle at a spot that they they needed to fill. And I'm guessing they'll they'll do so again in the draft. And then and and then you know you bring back Brandon Allen and and you bring back um um Juwan Jennings. Like there's all these, you know, kind of smaller moves on the on the fringes that are just filling out depth at this point. Because you hit the nail on the head, man. This is about the draft for me at this point. They have the star power. They they have made their big splash free agent signings. If they are going to, you know, climb that mountain and get back to the Super Bowl next season, it's going to be on the strength of, you know, what does Jair Brown look like at safety? How do they replace Talano Hufanga for it, it, for however many games they'll need to replace him? How do they replace Dre Greenlaw? Um, and, and they sp- and and to this point, um. They drafted two linebackers last year. Jair Brown was a draft pick last year. Um, they have two tight ends that they drafted in the third and seventh rounds last year. And they need tight end depth. 
These are all things that, yeah, there are needs that need to be filled, but B, you're not going to do it through free agency and you're certainly not going to do it through a splashy free agent signing. So I, I'm, I'm with you, man. You know, whatever they can do to fill out the roster in free agency is great, but this, this window and their long-term sustainability is going to be about the players that they bring in that they have cost controlled for at least four years. And they have to start yeah. hitting on draft picks because you can't you can't just whiff on draft classes. That's the 2014 Niners what happened when the 2012 draft class was a was a total bust. Right. For sure. And like there things could still look different a week from now, right? Like we're we're in the first wave of it. It seems like the safety market is super oversaturated and and Mike Silver friend of the show um wrote something for the Chronicle that published today. We're recording this Thursday that that indicated the 49ers were looking at safeties and also wrote something pretty interesting that um, Talano Hufunga isn't guaranteed a starting spot next year, um, which is which is pretty fascinating. And um, mm -hmm. maybe we could dive into that at, at a later date. But would indicate to me that, you know, maybe they are looking at, you know, like top top of the line safeties, given that you could potentially get somebody like that at a relatively cheap rate because mm -hmm. safeties are not getting paid right now. So, yeah, I mean through through the first the first, I don't know, 4 days of of free agency, I think it's been fine. Like we know this team loves to invest in the defensive line. We know they had a ton, basically all of their backup defensive linemen were free agents. Mm -hmm. And they've brought back Kevin Givens, but the rest of the group is basically entirely new. And I think I think it's going to be fine. Like, I think Chris Kasurik is going to coach these guys up. I think I think Leonard Floyd has a chance to be the best defensive end the 49ers have had opposite Nick Bosa. And, mm. you know, that that includes, you know, D Ford. But, like, peak D Ford, I don't know if Leonard Floyd is going to play better than D Ford at his peak was because D Ford flying off the edge was really, really good. Mm -hmm. The problem was the scarcity, right? Like, D Ford only played 20% of the snaps. In right. 2019 because of all the injuries he dealt with but when he was in there he was a it, it completely changed what the pass rush was for that team um yeah. but in term like you look at the guys that they signed these are all durable players mm -hmm. right like leonard floyd hasn't missed a game in six years right that's one of the things they liked about collins it's one of the things they liked about elliot um so and we'll see if if gross matos we can call him YGM. Is that is sure? Is that a thing that Panthers fans or Panthers podcasters have done? I haven't really been locked into too many <laughs> Panthers pot recently. Should Pods, we call them YGM? <laughs> um, their mascot yeah, y name YGM. Is yeah, Sir Per, which is I think a quality name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think YGM could be really interesting from the stand. Like if you think. Um, gosh, I'm, I'm blanking on Arden key. Like if you, oh, if okay. you like the Niners getting Arden key, then you definitely like the Niners getting YGM. Right. I kind of wondered if he could be, uh, and uh, I guess this is a little bit the, the same thing, just a different name it was like Charles Omenahu, yeah. where he's an edge rusher, but he kicks inside and, and is an effective pass rusher on the interior. He did, he, he did that for the Panthers. Yeah, for sure. So Look, we knew they – it wouldn't surprise me at all if they use their first-round draft pick on defensive line. wouldn't surprise yep. me at all if they, you know, went offensive line, of course. And I think if you were going to have a gripe, like why didn't the 49ers address the offensive line so far in free agency, I think my – without, like, doing a complete deep dive into all of the free agent guards and whatnot, like, mm -hmm. overall, offensive line play in the NFL is is bad. Just like yeah. there, there are very few good offensive lines in the league. Yep. And with with guards making what 15, 16, 17 million dollars a year, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense for the 49ers to to pay that kind of money for a guard, given yeah, the rest of the, I... the way the rest of the roster is constructed. So yeah, like ideally you'd you would upgrade the offensive line. But to me, I think that's more likely to come in the draft with somebody that yeah you feel like will be good for you in the long in like in over the long haul in the next three or four years on a rookie 
contract that's far cheaper than 15 16 17 million dollars a year right and that's the way you upgrade the position yeah no I, i'm maybe maybe you go get lakin tomlinson for cheap or something like a player you know can play and see if he can play right guard but you also have to take history into account here the the 49ers have historically not invested a ton at, at the interior offensive line spots and which i mean if you, if you look at their Super Bowl losses and the Rams NFC Championship game, you could say, mm-hmm. yeah, I probably wish the right guard spot was was better in those games. But I agree yeah. with you. Like, I'm not saying you're wrong at all. I'm just saying it's kind of funny that they're like, yeah, we don't really care about the interior right. of the offense. <laughs> when they get crushed by Chris Jones and Aaron Donald the, in the biggest moments of the season. It, but, that's, but that that is exactly the point. They have had that happen in the Super Bowl in 2019 – Two NFC title games, well, not really. One, one NFC title game and another Super Bowl, and they've yet to do anything about it. So I think they're going to roll in. They're going to. I think they like how John Feliciano played last year, and it was Spencer Burford, not Feliciano, who had the miscommunication on that on that third down play in overtime of, of the Super Bowl. I think they probably go get John Feliciano. Like I said, maybe they go get uh, a veteran like Lakin Tomlinson, who's available for cheap. And you have Colton McKivitz competing at right guard, and maybe you draft a right tackle, or maybe you draft uh, like Jordan Morgan from Arizona, who's projected as either a guard or tackle, and you just have all these players who can play a couple positions and you figure out who the best ones are. And that's kind of what they've been doing, and I think that's what they're going to do this year. Again. Yeah. So I, I um, it's not a huge surprise that they, they didn't prioritize the offensive line. And it's not a huge surprise that they prioritize the defensive line in free agency instead and ensuring that they had depth at those spots and, and affordable depth at the at that spot. Like they've emphasized the importance of the defensive line every year since since John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan took over. And I'm with you. The more the more I look at it, the more I read about the draft and the more I, I listen to stuff about the draft and watch stuff about the draft. It wouldn't shock me at all if they go defensive line in round one and figure out the offensive line stuff later. That yeah. would not surprise me whatsoever. Yeah, we know. I mean, look at the first round picks the 49ers have invested since 2017. You have mm-hmm. defensive line and linebacker Reuben Foster. I guess that's kind of a unique case. It's Solomon Thomas, Reuben Foster, Mike McGlinchey, offensive line, mm-hmm. Nick Bosa, defensive line. Javon Kinlaw and Brandon Ayuk, defensive line receiver. Um, Trey Lance, we'll just we'll just scroll past linebacker. That <laughs> no, so he was a safety. safety oh, safety! Damn, yeah. damn. Minnesota, Minnesota messed Minnesota up a good joke. <laughs> damn it! Uh, they didn't have first round pick in twenty two, but they took Drake Jackson D line. Uh, mm-hmm. Didn't have first or second round picks in uh, twenty three, but they took Jair Brown. So basically, like the vast majority of their first round picks have been in the trenches. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's kind of where I see them going. It was another thing I saw. I I think it was a clip not to gas up Mike Silver too much on this show, although I'm sure he doesn't mind. Um, I saw another clip of him on KNBR. He was talking with Steve Kerr and Steve Kerr actually asked him what he thinks the Niners are going to do in the draft. (laughs) (laughs) And and he said that he kind of thought the 49ers might look at receiver. Which is interesting. That wouldn't shock we me. Talk, we can talk about that later. Um, if they if there's a receiver that they like that they might trade up for. Welcome to today's podcast where we talk about all the stuff we're going to talk about later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we have, we'll we'll have plenty of time to dive into yeah, what they do. Yeah, I know what you mean. But yeah. um, it's a little bit topical to talk about, I guess, the reports of like mutual interest between Brandon Ayuk and the Jacksonville Jaguars or whatever. Okay, so can I can I spill some tea on this? Yeah, absolutely. So that re- that reported interest came from a television reporter in Jacksonville, mm-hmm. uh, whose Twitter bio says that she covers number sixteen for Jacksonville as well as the Jaguars. Um, shout out to I'm trying to get this to load real quick. Uh, love when Slack decides it needs to reboot while I'm trying to use it. Uh, Short version of this, our Jaguars editor at NFL Wires reached out and sent me that tweet and said, hey, every reporter in Jacksonville thinks she's full of shit, so 
I'm not writing this and you shouldn't either. <laughs> so uh, well, I guess she's been wrong about stuff in the past and has been accused of making stuff up. So I am not uh, going to buy into this just yet. So it's funny that you say that because that was going to be my point about this without knowing any of those things because I have not looked into oh, it. I just, saw the, I just saw the tweets. Um, Tale as old as time, man, is like... Song is old as rhyme. <laughs> it's the 49ers having a player due for a big contract and it being noisy as hell in the offseason and there being all sorts of weird stuff thrown out there and you know what more times than not with the exception of deforest buckner the 49ers have signed all these guys right so there's going to mm-hmm. be plenty of consternation and plenty of tweets and quote unquote reports and whatever about all this stuff which has been there basically every year and it's always led to the 49ers coming back and signing their guys so Let me, hey, can i that's not, that's not to say that's not to say I don't like there there's absolutely a chance that maybe Brandon Ayuk wants $35 million a year, no matter what. And the 49ers are like, all right, well, we're just going to trade you then. Cause we're not going to pay you that. Maybe that happens. Right. Yeah. But more than likely there's going to be all sorts of weird stuff reported this off season, all sorts of weird social media talk. That's going to draw reaction. And more than likely, it's not really going to be anything of actual substance. And more than likely, Brandon Ayuk's just going to sign a contract and be back on the 49ers in 2024. Yeah, let me hey, let me real quick, because that was unnecessarily mean. I don't know Mia O'Brien, and she could very well be right. <laughs> okay. I don't that was I did not mean to come across like a dick there. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh no, so this report from Mia O'Brien, uh, I was informed by our Jags wire editor to uh, not look too far into that and to wait for a, a different source on it before writing about it. It's also kind of a weird all report. I meant. No, I know. But like the deep, like there's mutual interest. Like to me, if there's mutual interest, like, are they tampering? Like have mm. they expressed interest to each other? Cause that would be tampering. Or is so it just the, is Brandon Ayuk being like, oh yeah, I'd love to go to the Jags, and is somebody with the Jags telling this reporter, oh yeah, we'd love to have Brandon Ayuk. I think most teams would like to have Brandon Ayuk. By the way, so, um, the tweet came in a reply to somebody saying that Brandon Ayuk started following some Jaguars players on Instagram. Ayuk interest is mutual. Here's the the tweet. So somebody, the great Pretty Ricky two one three on Twitter, said people saying Ayuk is now following Jaguars players on Instagram have only heard Debo being floated in potential offers. Uh, then Mio O'Brien said Ayuk interest is quote mutual between Jaguars and his team per source. Obviously very early. So. That's saying the 49ers and Jags have discussed a trade. I don't, I don't know, but I'm bottom. I have no idea. Bottom line is uh, you're right. Like Debo was going to get traded to the Jets. Remember like on draft day, there was a question when the Jets picked at 10. It's like, oh man, here's where we'll know. We're going to find out live. And lo and behold, they picked Garrett Wilson and Debo Samuel has been on the 49ers ever since. There was a lot of weird stuff about Debo Samuel Debo that was came out. Super weird. That came out that off season that was just like that's crazy. This seems super toxic, and this yeah. seems like he's out of there. And then he resigned. So hey, speaking of speaking of that, did you see the Jason Lock and Four report that Debo the Ravens called the Niners about trading for Debo? Man, I don't want to make this about shitting on other reporters, but no, no, like, no, no. when it comes to, when it comes no, I got I got something to say. When it comes to Jason Lock and Fora, like how how many stories about the 49ers is he gonna get wrong before we stop giving him airtime and talking about this team? Like Jed York was gonna like know. fire who was he gonna fire and hire Mike Shanahan to be his coach? Like, there's like all sorts of weird stuff, and like Lock and Four has clearly had it out for the Shanahans dating back to their time in Washington, because mm-hmm. he wrote that story about Kyle Shanahan as the offensive coordinator, 
and like basically saying he was entitled and hired a bunch of all of his friends on that staff and like all of his quote unquote all his all yeah all those quote unquote friends of Kyle Shanahan's are now like the best head coaches in the NFL (laughs) so like I like you know that it it's been made very clear that Jason Lock and Ford does not talk to anybody in the 49ers building and so any reporting quote unquote reporting that he does I just I'm not going to take it seriously until he gets a story about the 49ers right and I'm very much not the type of guy who wants to publicly like shit on other reporters but it's just like there there are certain voices out there that when they say something about the Niners and it goes quote unquote viral on Twitter and it like draws this massive reaction it's like all right and yeah maybe the Ravens wanted to trade for Debo Samuel sure Mm -hmm. but like it doesn't make any financial sense for the 49ers to trade Debo Samuel right so maybe a phone call was made but like Unless, you know, I, I've just and, and phone calls happen all the time. There are sure. probably there are hundreds and hundreds of phone calls that don't get reported on. So, like, unless there's something of actual substance, like I, I think a lot of times people will hear things and just run with them without actually verifying if they're correct or without providing any context. Like, well, also, 25 teams have inquired about Debo Samuel because other teams are looking at the 49ers receiver situation and saying they can't afford to pay everybody. Like mm-hmm. that would be a far more interesting report than saying, "Oh, the Ravens want to trade for Debo." Anyway, anyone else? Off my anyone else want to get no, want to get a stray here? We're good. We're very positive on this podcast so- generally. I just like don't. <laughs> I, they're, they're just like one or two voices out there that say things, and it's just like, why are why are we wasting our time getting riled up about this shit? Eric DaCosta, the Ravens GM at Derrick Henry's intro presser today, got asked about the the Debo Samuel trade rumor. Yes. And he responded that he recently read the Lorax at a local elementary school and that he would categorize the Lorax in that report in the same category, which is nuts. (laughs) (laughs) That was a wild thing to say in a room with air in it. Uh, Yeah. But and in his in his thick ass accent, it was super funny. Um, but yeah, no, I I don't the whole Debo trade thing. Like you said, the Niners would eat so much money to get rid of a player who's super important for their offense. Right, right. So and they don't. It's not like I think there's this perception nationally that the Niners are like up against it, needing to dump everybody. And it's like, man, that's not that's not at all where they're at. But if Brandon Ayuk got traded, I would not be shocked at all. And if Brandon Ayuk specifically got traded to the Jags, I wouldn't be that shocked. Uh, if he request, if he was like, I got to get to the Jags, I would be pretty shocked by that. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> but if if the Niners wound up trading him and it was to the Jags, I wouldn't shock me. Sure. But if Brandon Ayuk was like, Jacksonville's where I got to be, Duval, baby, I'd be a little... Yeah. <laughs> overall um, though fine free agency for the Niners so far since we last recorded Eric Armstead was officially released I know we oh, had talked damn, about that's right I know we had talked about you know maybe he comes back um did not come back he got so three years 51 million dollars from Jacksonville good yes. for him man shout out Eric that's Armstead. great I I'm as Waiting you know big Big structure guy waiting on the structure but yeah that would seem like a very good contract for armstead so good for him for getting that um i said it on on your radio airwaves today not on your show but i went on d and kc in sacramento and they asked me oh wow that's cool that's nice yeah i mean i don't get the invite to go enjoy that i i get the uh i get the invite from from damien a lot but not well no no no. i invited you on the show one time and you're like oh no can doosville i got shoot around and we got a lunch date, so it's fine. A lunch date, oh, no. <laughs> or <laughs> dinner, or whatever, whatever you had in Minnesota. I don't know. Like I needed to eat sustenance. <laughs> <laughs> um, you no, had to so, eat food like an asshole. Oh, maybe that was a dinner with Craig. Shout out to Craig. Man. Yeah, um, love Craig. Great, great, great meal. Um, but they asked D'Lo and KC asked me about the arm set thing, and I think like the answer is what's good what's good for the player and what's good for the team sometimes are divergent things and that's just a reality of sports at the highest level right 
what's good for what's good for the Niners is to move on from Eric Armstead, and what's good for Eric Armstead is to move on from the Niners. Is to get that bag. Go get that money, man. Like he's got, you know, he's got a young family. I know it's millions of dollars, so like I understand the context of of the family talk. But he's got a young family, and he's got a lot of charitable stuff that he's doing, and he pours yes. a lot of his own money into that. Yes. Um, and in the NFL, your earning power is extremely limited. So um, I don't blame Arn said for not wanting to take a pay cut at all. I don't blame the 49ers for not wanting to pay him um, $18 million this year because, frankly, he's, you know, on, on the wrong set, side of 30. And mm-hmm. he's coming off knee surgery and he's missed a significant portion of the last two seasons. So, yeah, you know, it's one of those things. It makes sense for both sides for, for them to amicably part. Um, but it is too bad Armstead didn't get a chance to be on the 10 year wall because I, yeah, I, that was definitely something that meant a lot to him. Um, and it's just part of it, man. He was a good niner, really good niner. Had a, had a really, really, really fine career. And he's had one a lot of, those... of his best games in the playoffs. Yeah, man. He was always really, really good in the postseason. Uh, this is, this is something that I, I also mentioned on the radio. Eric Armstead's one of those players that, if if I wind up having kids someday and they're sports fans and they're looking back through like old Niner teams, they're going to be like, Eric Armstead, if you look at his like 33 and a half sacks in eight years, like he's, he, you know, missed a bunch of games. And so, yeah, but your, the impact your, kid, your kids are going to be sorting through AAV on pro football reference. Yeah, like, dude, Daddy, it, who is Eric Armstead? <laughs> dude, that's the kind of shit I did. Like, I mean, I don't know. Um, I just sit there and I scroll through baseball references and just ask my dad about old A's players. You remember this when guy? My, Tell me about him. When my when my kids are asking me for my PFF login. <laughs> <laughs> we share we share a login they're, with Kyle. <laughs> <You're>, <laughs> they're they're gonna see the lime green grade next to ninety one and ask Daddy, who's Eric Armstead? <laughs> Tell me about Eric. <laughs> Is this three-time Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee? <laughs> no. I got nothing man. else. He's, he's a really good person. person. Really good um, person. Eric, Eric Kendricks. Do we have any Eric Kendricks thoughts? Fuck him. No. <laughs> <laughs> Traitor. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't. I, Matt Mayoko reported that the 49ers have strong interest in Devondre Campbell, another former All-Pro yeah. linebacker. I think that's the right move. You get a veteran there who can fill in as the will linebacker. And if Dre Greenlaw comes back this year, which would, which would be, you know, it feels like pretty miraculous. Um, then he slots in and you have a really good Sam linebacker, but yeah, no thoughts on Eric Kendricks. It makes sense. Like, dude, he's going to play for Mike Zimmer again, who is exactly. his defensive coordinator and head coach in Minnesota. Like, that makes, that makes all the sense to me. Yeah. If you were, you know, fewer taxes to deal with in Texas, his old coach, probably a more clearly defined role than like being a placeholder for Dre Greenlaw, who, who knows when he's going to come back, but like, I would imagine he's going to go start in Dallas and not be a question starter. So yeah. Yeah. I don't really have a problem with it. I thought it would, it would have been a really solid signing given the circumstances. Mm -hmm. Um, And if they get Campbell, that would be, I think a, a pretty good signing. Yeah, I agree. So this is a great question to end the pod from Bryce Herber in the YouTube chat. YouTube.com slash at Candlestick Chronicles podcast. Uh, search Candlestick Chronicles on YouTube. I'm going to go with a Mount Rushmore of pie, a Mount Pie more here, because picking one is impossible. Okay. I think I'm going, um, I think in the in the Washington spot, that top spot, <laughs> I'm going with, uh, I'm going Key Lime, dude. Dude. I've seen the light. I've seen the light on Key Lime. I went to Key West. Mm-hmm. And in Key West, they just have lime pie shops. You walk in and you can get a key lime slice to go. You can get chocolate dipped key lime on a stick. You can ship whole key lime pies home. It just it's it, it's so sick. And you just walk around the streets eating key lime pie out of a little plastic container. Shout out to Key Lime. Lemon meringue is up there for me. Uh, mm. Give me apple and then give me a good banana cream pie. I'm all set. Okay. I have, I don't have any qualms with anything you said. Um, key lime pie is definitely one of my favorites. 
-hmm. I will say though, it can be a high ceiling, low floor situation. Abs absolutely. Bad key lime pie you, is terrible. Bad key lime pie is really, really bad, but good key lime pie is, is unbelievable. So yep. just make sure the key lime's fresh. Make sure you're not getting too sour, too tart, a key lime mm -hmm. uh, filling in that, in that pie. Um, like all your picks, uh, I will say, and this is a new thing for me as of the last, I guess, couple months, mm -hmm. spent a little bit of time in Memphis, maybe more time in Memphis. And I would like to admit, just walking um, in Memphis. I was, I did a lot of walking in Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. Blow um, path that joke. That's terrible. <laughs> Keep going. Sorry. <laughs> I, I made it a few times myself. You ever have chess pie? Chess pie is good. If you are in the South and if you are in a place that serves fried chicken, maybe even Gus's, uh, would highly recommend getting a chess pie because it's I'm trying to think of like what what it compares to. Um, is it chocolate? You can get a chocolate chess pie. It's like it's a cream. Um I mean, it's a southern dessert, but it's it's good. It's it's really good. It actually surprised me. I I honestly though have no idea how to describe it. I wish I could. Like, there's, an, it's kind of unique, but also familiar. Like it's oh, one of it's those like, things. It's it's almost like a like a custard. Yes, that yeah. It's like a a little bit firmer custard. Okay. Um, but it comes in different variants. And if you're in the South and you're in a good restaurant and they have chess pie, um, I would just, it's there for a reason. So I, I, I rock with a good chess pie, but I Damn, think key this, lime, I would, key I would lime, key lime for, yeah, key lime for me is, is one of my favorites. If you can get a good one no doubt. and you know, if it's fall apple, like you're not going to go wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Pumpkin for me is a Thanksgiving only thing. Oh, okay. like elite pumpkin pie on that day, but not any other day. It's like candles for you, just like only at certain times. Well, candles twenty four seven three sixty five, but candle scents right. change That's with what the I mean. seasons. Yeah, like <laughs> we're talking pies, pie flavors, candle, right. candle scents. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> favorite yeah price. Shepherd's is a great pie. Yeah. Shepherd's give me a chicken pot. Anyways. Uh, Bryce doesn't like our key lime take. Hey, Bryce. Kick rocks. Take. Kick rocks, Kick dog. Rocks. All right. Anyways. Or just like have a good key lime pie. I think most people <laughs> who dislike key lime pie have never had a good key lime pie. So. All right. We're going to get out of here. Love it. Subscribe, rate, review, wherever you get your podcasts. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe while watching on YouTube. We would appreciate the hell out of that. Hit the little thumbs up button as well. And the little notification bell, which tells you uh, when we go live. And shout out to, uh, before we get out of here, shout out to Pedro. Listening all the way out in Uruguay. We are international, baby. International. Um, love to see it. Love yeah. all of our listeners, especially those who are up at, I have no idea what time it is in Uruguay, but I imagine it's probably not 9 o'clock, so... Shout out to anybody who's staying up late and rocking with us. We appreciate you guys. It is 12.59 a.m. in Uruguay right now. Double shouts to Pedro for that. Pedro, you're the man. Uh, hope work tomorrow or whatever's happening for you tomorrow is not too arduous in the morning because, <laughs> man, you're up late. We'll talk to and you. And that's it. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> See ya.